Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, three o'clock Eastern, two o'clock Central. So I think it's time to get started now. So welcome, everyone, to our first online edition of the Print Archive Network Forum. For those of you new to PAN, we normally meet together at the ALA conferences and hope to again next year. On the plus side, this online format has meant we um, welcome a lot of first-time attendees here today. And we've actually had more than 140 registrants in total, which is in fact a record attendance for PAN. I'm Matthew Revitt and I'm the moderator for PAN. My day job is the main shared collections librarian at the University of Maine. And I'm also the shared print consultant for EAST, the Eastern Academic Scholars Trust. I'd like to thank the Centre for Research Libraries who sponsor PAN, particularly Marie Waltz and the technical services team supporting us today. Just as a heads up, all attendees are muted upon entry. If you do have any questions for the panelists, please submit them using the chat function. If you aren't already a member, I would encourage you to join the panelist serve where you'll see announcements about future forums and receive the update reports submitted by programs. Thank you to those of you who've submitted reports for today. Copies of those reports and previous updates are available in the online PAN archive maintained by CRL, where there'll also be a recording of today's presentation and the presenter slides. Just a reminder that if you would like to hear from specific sub about specific subjects or programs, please send them to either me or to Marie. Next slide, please. We're going to kick things off today with our update section, which, has been, as has been the recent trend at PAN, features projects operating at the national scale. First, we'll be an update on the work of the Partnership for Shared Book Collections, particularly as it relates to research into risk. This will be followed by an update from the Canadian Collective Print Strategy before we hear, hear an update from OCLC and CRL on their joint Mellon-funded project to make improvements to the shared print infrastructure in both WorldCut and paper. A final update will be from the Harvey Trust California Digital Library and CRL on their shared print infrastructure project as well. The subscribers to the PAN archive will have seen exciting updates from over the past few months. Next slide, please. After a five minute break, we'll have two panel discussions, which I'm really looking forward to hearing from. The first is what's next for the JSTOR print collections? Don't stop now. Followed by pushing through the pandemic, digitization, licensing and shared print. There'll be time after each presentation for questions. And again, please use the chat option at the bottom of your screen and direct your question to all presenters. There'll be a final opportunity for questions at the end of the forum in the Q&A section. I know one of the aspects many of us will miss not meeting in person is a chance to chat with colleagues. So to help address this, an informal post-pan water cooler chat is being held next week on Zoom on Thursday, July 2nd at 12 Eastern. The details will be sent to the panel listserv and are going to be included on a later slide. Next slide, please. Our first presenter is Susan Stearns, who, as well as being the project director of EAST, also chairs the Partnership for Shared Book Collections Steering Committee. Susan will provide an update on the partnership's activities, as well as those of the Rosemont Shared Print Alliance. Susan will be joined by Ian Bogus, Executive Director of Recap, and Candy Yarno. Professor of Operations and Information Technology Management at UC Berkeley. Ian and Candy will be, will be previewing their research on risk relating to the optimal number of copies needed to be retained to ensure future access. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Matthew. Can you hear me okay? Just fine, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, Good day, everyone. Uh, it's marvelous to see such a, such a great turnout. Uh, thank you to Matthew for all of his organizing skills and to CRL for hosting yet another PAN forum. Um, my focus today, as Matthew indicated, will be on updating you on work that's being done across uh, shared print programs at the national level on both the monograph and the serials and journals side. I'll then hand off to Ian and Candy, who will discuss an important aspect of shared print, research on risk. Next slide, please. This quote 
from the former dean of, um, at the University of Minnesota encapsulates not only what I want to present to you today, but really the overarching mission of the many shared print programs represented uh, in PAN today. I hope to talk about both coherence and coordination in giving you updates on the work of the Rosemont Alliance for Shared Print, which is focused on serials and journals retention, and the Partnership for Shared Book Collections, whose focus is monograph retention. Next slide, please. Collaboration is at the heart of shared print, and the Rosemont Shared Print Alliance was the first truly national collaboration across programs. Today, Rosemont counts as members the five largest serials and journals shared print programs in the U.S. Over the last few months, Rosemont has ratified an agreement for last copies and outlined an initiative that aims to identify unretained titles held by only one library in the group. We have also been active in continuing to develop and expand policies related to shared print, working both with OCLC and with the partnership. More recently, we formed a task force looking at communications, also working collaboratively with the partnership, and have continued to engage with other programs, particularly with colleagues at CRL. Next slide, please. Here you see information on the collection growth across Rosemont. With a goal of adding 100,000 new titles by 2021, Rosemont now has almost 57,000 unique titles, representing over 102,000 total copies. As the duplication information shows, many of these titles have only a single copy across the programs. And the Eastern Academic Scholars Trust is currently adding almost 7,500 titles to paper, the paper database, that are not reflected in these counts. As the infrastructure supporting shared print expands and is increasingly open, we hope to be able to provide more and better information on how the programs involved in Rosemont are doing in terms of preserving access to print serials and journals. Next, please. Here you see some of the specific work Rosemont is planning for the future. Once data on last copies across the members are available, we will implement plans for a last copy initiative, including identifying storage partners. The collaborative work with the partnership will continue, both in terms of work on policies and best practices, and in developing communications and outreach resources. And finally, as our support of the CRL, CDL, Hathi Trust infrastructure project makes clear, Rosemont is committed to ongoing advocacy on behalf of the shared print community. Next, please. I also want to provide a brief update on the work of the Partnership for Shared Book Collections, Rosemont's counterpart on the monograph side. The partnership was formally launched at the January PAN meeting with seven member programs and has doubled its membership in the last six months, growing to 14, including our newest member, the Hathi Trust Shared Print Program. I'll speak in a moment about some of the partnership's accomplishments, but here's a snapshot of where we are today. We're in the midst of the transition to our formal governance. If you're a member, you'll know that we have a call out for nominations for our elected executive committee. Elections will be held shortly after PAN. We also have a call out for applications for a part-time program coordinator and hope to have that person in place soon. As you've heard, we've worked to expand our collaboration, particularly in our work with Rosemont. Much of the work of the partnership's original open data working group has been passed over to the new CRL CDL Hathi Trust project, and we will continue to actively support their work, which you'll hear about a little bit later today. Finally, we continue to advocate for shared print, often in conjunction with our Rosemont colleagues. Next, please. Although some of the work of the initial partnership working groups has been completed, the Best Practices Working Group has continued its focus on developing guidelines, principles, and practices in a number of important areas of shared print. 
Working group co-conveners Heather Welton and Tina Bache hosted a webinar earlier this month to solicit feedback from the shared print community on the draft best practices developed by their group. A recording is linked from the partnership website, sharedprint.org, and additional feedback can be submitted via the URL you see here. The Best Practices Working Group has also formed subgroups to start work on a second set of best practices that have been identified as areas of need. The work of these subgroups was delayed by the COVID-19 pandemic, but will recommence in July. Next slide, please. Those of you who were here in January may remember the initial work done by the Partnerships Outreach and Engagement Working Group including development of a Wikipedia article on collective collections. This group has also identified five communication strategies for shared print programs that focus on telling a compelling narrative with images and video as well as words that encourages the use of supporting data, that recognizes the need to generate attention for shared print, not just once, but on an ongoing basis, and that acknowledges the commitment to long-term access. Most recently, that working group put a call out for new members with skills in marketing and communication, and as mentioned earlier, is continuing its collaboration with Rosemont. Next slide, please. Before I turn this over to Ian to talk about the work of the Risk Research Working Group, I want to talk some about why I believe the varying levels of collaboration you're seeing today in the shared print community are important, at least for now. First, the infrastructure for shared print continues to limit some of our efforts. The project involving CRL, CDL, and Hathi Trust would not have occurred without foundational work done by both Rosemont and the partnership. As concepts around shared print and collective collections become more embedded in the life cycle of library materials, it will become increasingly important that we advocate for appropriate ways to discover this information and surface it as part of resource sharing. The best practices webinars I mentioned earlier would not have been developed without participation by many individuals across the memberships of both Rosemont and the partnership and in fact beyond. And finally, as we look to ensure that our scholarly print record continues to be valid, even in the digital age, we definitely need to focus on outreach and communications. Next slide, please. So I want to end by encouraging all of you to view the brief video developed jointly by Rosemont and the partnership. It highlights the importance of shared print collections in libraries as a key component to ensuring ongoing and future access to the scholarly record. Remember, you can only digitize something if the original print copy has been safely retained. Thank you, and with that, I'll turn it over to Ian. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Ian Bogus. Uh, my job today really is to introduce Dr. Yano, a, a highly decorated industrial engineer out of UC Berkeley. Uh, the Partnerships Risk Working Group has been working with her in order to find a uh, evidence-based approaches to, to shared print best practices. Um, these are things that librarians, or at least the librarians in our working group, really aren't qualified to do by ourselves. And we found it really rewarding to work with a non-library academic in order to get much better results than what we've been able to do otherwise. Um, there is a lot of work that still needs to be done in shared print research, and I think that um, librarians should be engaging academics um, more so than, than what we have been, and that we'll be getting um, better results for doing that. The working group still has some work to do ahead of it in order to apply the research that you'll hear about today and to find some variables uh, or find some values for variables that, that we just don't have yet. Uh, but we do hope that you find what, what Dr. Yano talks about is as interesting um, and exciting as what we do. So anyway, without further ado, Dr. Yano. Ian, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I'll be talking uh, very briefly about uh, the, the project involving the development of a spreadsheet that would help shared print consortia to make better decisions about their retention when there are books in varying conditions and storage conditions may also vary. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, I want to offer my thanks to Ian and his 
risk working group, um, as well as scientists at the Library of Congress, Preservation Research and Testing Division, and finally to Lillian Dong, who's um, carried uh, the, the workload of uh, putting together the, the spreadsheet for us today. Next slide, please. So our motivation was settings in which we're concerned about trying to retain copies that are essentially coming off the shelf, same title, um, but they may have different conditions at, at the moment, and there may be uncertainty about whether they're even on the shelf um, at the moment because we don't have the capability to go in and identify and check each one. The storage conditions may also differ. Some may be stored in cold storage. Others may be simply on a normal library shelf. And uh, we want to account for nonlinear degradation of the usability of the copies over time, as uh, scientific evidence already suggests. And finally, um, we're interested in differences in the possible physical loss that depends on the level of storage security, whether it be, for instance, a normal library shelf or off-site storage. So we want to take a look at issues of um, how many copies should we keep? Uh, how do the different initial conditions matter? And what kinds of storage environments are there? And how did they affect the availability of the tool? Next slide, please. Okay. So one of the topics that we discussed at length was the notion of usability. And after some discussion, we finally came up with the um, definition of it, usability being fit for use by the intended users, um, meaning that, for instance, the page, pages can be turned without irreparable damage and the material itself is readable. And because we're trying to project many decades into the future, we uh, represent this as um, trajectories of probabilities that decline over time, taking into account what is known scientifically about properties of the paper or our best guesses about how things will evolve, um, the effects of environmental conditions and the like. Next slide, please. So one, this is just an example trajectory um, where at the outset, we think that um, the usability is quite high, but over time, it degrades initially uh, in a fairly flat fashion, but then much more steeply over time near the end. Um, next slide, please. So what our spreadsheet does is to calculate the probability of at least one usable copy remaining um, over a time horizon. And the spreadsheet accounts for all of the factors that I mentioned earlier. And it calculates the probability that at least one usable copy exists at time grid points over a selected range. Um, for instance, every decade or 100 years. And it's, uh, we set it up so that it's easy to use, so that one can try different alternatives. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, some of the inputs that the user uh, would put into the spreadsheet uh, pertain to, for instance, how many initial conditions would you like to have? You could have, for instance, something representing excellent, another one representing very good, and another representing good. Um, how many environmental conditions do you want to consider? It could be cold storage, it could be normal library shelves or something else. How many security conditions do you want to consider? Um, Off-site storage would be different than, um, for instance, a typical library shelf. Um, and then one needs to put in a little bit of data um, related to this, such as um, what's the loss probability in an off-site storage location versus uh, normal library shelf. Um, next slide, please. Okay, um, and then one also puts in decay trajectories. So these can differ depending upon storage uh, condition as well as the initial condition of the book. So it may be that a book that starts off in really good condition may deteriorate differently even in the same storage environment as a book that starts off in worse condition. Next slide, please. Um, one then puts in input counts of books um, based upon their initial condition, um, the storage condition, and the level of security being provided. And one can put in different counts for each of these uh, combinations. Next slide, please. 
And then the spreadsheet will output uh, the probability that at least one usable copy exists over um, some time horizon here. I've just shown it for 50 years out to 100 years, roughly every decade. Next slide, please. So um, this is a work in progress. So we have kind of a working model that we're hoping that Ian's working group could um, test out for us. And we're hoping to offer broader distribution uh, later in the year. Um, next slide, please. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for either um, of the presenters? And again, just as a reminder, if you can put those into the chat um, box, please. I'm seeing a question come in here. Um, let me just bring it over. This is from Carla Schweb. Um, and the question is, I can't see how actual use is accounted for in this model. Something that circulates once a year would degrade faster than something that circulates once every 50 years. So, go ahead, Andy. Do you want to take that, Ian? Sure. Sure. I was just going to say, um, what we have noticed, at least, is that most books do not circulate that heavily after an initial period of time, especially. So books, you know, 50 years old, for example, um, very few of them circulate annually or even, you know, a decade. Um, they're still used in mass, but not uh, on a huge route. So once you get past an initial hump of use, uh, we don't think that there that the amount of use in aggregate, at least, is going to have a major impact. It's a good question. And another question from from Sherry is: Will this model be extensible to non-book print formats such as pamphlets or rebound-bound together items? Um, I would say yes. Uh, be happy to discuss the possibility. And we've got a comment here in the. Sorry, was that? Got a comment here in the chat now that the value of shared print video is designed to be used by any shared print program to advocate for the work of this community. So please use as desired. Yes, we intend to be able to release this with instruction and that people will be able to use it widely. Thank you.